Don in London, hello. It's June 19th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places and things. Wanting, always wanting to be in the right place with the right people, doing the right things and having the right things. Not uncommon. But uh, when we take things to extremes of desire to fit in beyond what is natural and a habit of drinking alcohol which becomes dependency and in my case addiction something had to give so my whole life changed and from being whatever I was doing whatever I was in a big company reasonably successfully I got specialised and found that whatever I was doing it was always going to be more of the same so I had to find value in doing it and the only thing I found value in at that time was how much could I earn and odd really everything turned to something I felt I could control and that was my career and unfortunately it careered out of control as did I having a nervous breakdown finding myself unable to cope with life and also unable to go back to that sort of work in the long term and then several years later totally reliant on alcohol to the point where everything else was lost so I suppose this is about learning how to live life in recovery one day at a time and share some experience, strength and hope and what helped me most everything from family, friends and community to professional and medical people to keep me alive and in recovery, that is, not drinking one day at a time, all sorts of things have been discovered about my medical conditions, like the onset of type 1 diabetes and also having clinical depression, which can affect me on a daily basis or a day-to-day -day basis. So three chronic ailments to deal with. At the same time, because I am in a fellowship, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, it's taught me how to live to good 12 good principles and be able to cope with life as it is. So Alcoholics Anonymous, part of my story, a big part, where I've met people with the wisdom to help me. And each and every person is, in, is unique and authentic in their outlook, their wisdom, and where they are on their life journey. So the good news is I meet people as they are. What I see is what I get in fellowship. It's not attra it's attraction by what you see is what you get, and not promotion, which is trying to fix things. So in the same vein, this video is all about what works for me and what I learn on a daily basis from fellowship and whatever is going on with other people. So what follows after this part of the video is uh, daily reflections from the AA fellowship. I don't speak for AA, never can, never will full of unique authentic people who speak for themselves quite a long preamble there anyway for today I've been I take some readings out of stuff I've done either over the years and then add something from uh, what's happening now and today's daily reflection in the fellowship is about John Barleycorn and I was looking it up on the internet John Barleycorn is a song and re refers, as it says here, around the time of writing of much of AA's literature, John Barleycorn had come to be used as a euphemism, or another word for alcohol alcoholism or alcohol. And the problem is, if we have a drink inside us, we are influenced directly and in trying to fix ourselves and our feelings. And John Barleycorn, the inner voice, when it's in, when it's under the influence of our alcohol tends to make us able to sustain extremes of feelings and behaviour both positive and negative so mind altering definitely and certainly behaviour altering as well so I could talk myself into anything with a drink inside me and yeah many relationships started that way they didn't end well because John Barleycorn was the influence rather than finding out how to love a person, be loved back and have a useful life. 
and something which I suppose is on my mind always my thinking can lead me all over the place so sometimes I have to ask myself or often I ask myself why am I thinking this way I know I need to do this I want to do that I want to fix something thinking is always influenced by my feelings and desires always I need to be aware of my desires and intentions ask myself how am I feeling why and what to do helps me find the best next step in the moment and now and that's true because we are emotional people we forget we keep on thinking we ought to be something <coughs> we should do something we could do this and that and that's where we start to bend ourselves into different shapes if you like to fit in rather than understand our feelings generally of how to love people be loved back and do something useful something we want to do or need to do rather than ought should or could we have to have an understanding of what we like and then work out what next and in recovery that's been great because it's helped me understand how to be myself first so what you see is what you get going on uh, life plan just for today our thinking is often in the next moment so we're thinking ahead our feelings catching up as we make sense of real-time events and that's true our shock denial anger and resentment joy happiness can be right-sized in the moment when we stop analyzing let and let go and feel the moment of now and the reason for doing that again is how am I feeling am I feeling less than more than equal to what's going on so if we understand our feelings then we understand where our thinking is coming from and often it's negative feelings around doing something or positive feelings about doing something which is maybe beyond where we are but feelings can play catch-up with reality when we get nasty shocks uh, we have a, an automatic process of denial which is I don't believe it or as is said often oh my god what's going on and those things are in our heads and we, well, f our feelings are dealing with something of a surprise maybe so our feelings then need to be translated into thinking actions and attitudes going on AA regeneration alone we could not stop this is all, all about drinking for others we could not stop and in my case no amount of emphatic suggestions of one sort or another or being implored to stop drinking I couldn't stop and the reason if I couldn't do it myself how could people ask me to stop it was just impossible until I found people who knew how to be stopped and stay stopped and in the moment of now not drinking and sober together in recovery we rely on many with experience strength and hope to keep sober today one human will pull another under the waves and that's true if we rely one on one other person more often than not if we're in a partnership we pull people down to where we are rather than coming up to where they are and that's dangerous we if we over rely on one person in fellowship too we tend to maybe drag them down and unless they've got some support as well as trying to support us then the whole pack of cars can come tumbling down very quickly and in unity service the many save another into recovery today so that's why we always say the new newcomer is the most important person in the room so important that often we don't see it if we've been in for a while we are still concerned with our own agenda so we have to make sure that we put the newcomer on the agenda every time or at least I do and then and then there is a possibility that we can help as a group AA is a group activity it's the very many voices always that help us with experience strength and hope to learn the wisdom of living in the now and uh, an excerpt from an email to a friend and this is about what was happening with me over the last couple of days I enjoyed the two meetings on Friday and went to the lunchtime meeting at the hut yesterday and I put here an old Mr Smith did the chair and of course Mr Smith is just a euphemism or name for some, somebody who did, did, did the chair I shan't say who 
and the sad at the same time and this is how it is when people talk about recovery there's the funny side of life and then there's the sad side of life and how it's, how life is impacting in the moment and sometimes on a given day, any given day we can be enormously gr grateful for what, what is going on or sometimes sad that life is coming to an end good sharing by everyone and me there was a girl called I can't say the name who is doorman at a club where I used to be a doorman many years ago and it made me smile which is something I did back in the day coincidences are plenty always in meetings and it was good to laugh and know the club is same as always a den of iniquity sex, drugs and alcohol I wouldn't say rock and roll some of the members of that club are very ancient but uh, yeah it was it was and is a den of iniquity it made me laugh because the uh, person who headhunted me there is still in charge well there you go after all these years anyway um, the last part was you know going to meetings is always like putting on an old set of clothes which fit nice roomy and comfortable and that's true uh, I had had a little break from meetings because I had other things to do but I was always conscious and in contact with fellowship through emails and internet and with people coming to see me as well which is lovely because it's done in friendship I do love meetings and they never seem to irritate me I just come away happy even when I get collared afterwards for long chats and you know a long chat can be just about finding out what's going on in another person's life and taking an interest or it might be about something to do with the steps or something to do with personal stuff or just simply what's, what's in the news today or look, looking up at the sky and it reminds me always when I go to meetings of AA it is a sanctuary to find the truth of who we are it's a sanctuary with anonymity very very important anonymity to find the truth of who we are so what follows some uh, other stuff from other years and then the step 6 reading from the 12 and 12 I also noticed that I had put some music on one or two videos in early years which then led to adverts all over the video which I upload to YouTube I've taken them off I don't want to advertise anything I don't want to affiliate with anything just like AA really but they're not affiliated to me either so these videos are well outside the fellowship of AA even though I talk about it incessantly that's the truth of it and uh, another day I'm going to lunch with family it's great more later Hello, Don in London. Uh, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, equally addictive. Work, relationships, people, places and things. And what helps me on a daily basis to keep sober today and find life balance is the fellowship of AA and people within. I don't speak for AA, no one does. We only speak for ourselves, our experience, strength and hope. And I share here the daily reflections for each day. And for June 19th, it says here, AA Regeneration. Such is the paradox of AA Regeneration. Strength arising out of complete defeat and weakness. The loss of one's old life is a condition for finding a new one. So letting go of the old life, the old attitudes and behaviours, and learning how to behave differently, to make good choices, and be free of the bondage of self and alcohol. A Thousand Beatings by John Barleycorn, that's the inner voice which says, I'll give it up tomorrow, or I won't do it again, did not encourage me to admit defeat. I believed it was my moral obligation to conquer my best friend, or my enemy friend. Alcohol became my best friend, and then it nearly killed me. At my first AA meeting, I was blessed with a feeling that it was all right to admit defeat to a disease which had nothing to do with my moral fibre, I knew instinctively that I was in the presence of a great love when I entered the doors of AA. With no effort on my part, I became aware that to love myself was 
good and right as God had intended. My feelings set me free where my thoughts had held me in bondage. I am grateful. And that last sentence where it says, my feelings set me free. To be free of that, where my thinking, my old thinking and attitudes and behaviour kept me in the malady of drink. So, as I say at the end of these videos, what helps me on a daily basis when I need to know what I can and cannot do? It's an appeal to God or good conscience. God or to good conscience. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot do courage to do the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is always just for today. Don in London, hello, June 19th, 2009 and the time is 7.30 in the morning. What am I doing this video at this time for? Anyway, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour, trying to be whatever you wanted me to be, trying to find out who I am on a daily basis for 30 odd years and still not finding out. And I guess the idea these days for me is to find out who I am on a daily basis. That is to be able to be a part of society, community, family. And what makes this possible when uh, I used to be addicted to alcohol and my behaviour was not at its best by a long chalk and quite distorted by my view of the world, a view which was uh, insular, excluding most people and kept me isolated for a long time. So I'm on day five of a five day programme to deal with another condition I have besides addiction which I got in recovery and I've been recovered or not recovered, recovered on a daily basis for, for over five years. So these days I, I have a life plan which is one day long and uh, when we have gone on a tra training course or an orientation if you like to another condition which we need to deal with it also opens up the doors to maybe extending life a bit further for somebody like me. So I'm alive and that's the gift of uh, sobriety and the gift of sobriety afford me, afforded me the luxury if you like to be normal and normal meant that uh, I was able to not only have uh, recovery to deal with but I got type 1 diabetes in recovery and I also got properly diagnosed with clinical, clinical depression so these days I'm just doing my best and being included in life Sorry about the bells going off in the background, it was an alarm. So, where am I today? Well, day five. I feel a bit punch drunk, which is a strange thing to say when you're in a, in a sober place. But it's been intensive, and being with people who are dealing with a, another silent killer, if you like. And I've learned so much from them, as well as from the professionals running this program. So, I'm extraordinarily grateful to be alive so that I have type 1 diabetes, so that I know what I am dealing with with clinical depression on a daily basis. So these days, when things are going wrong, I try and find and access the truth as best I can. What has helped me immensely is the Fellowship of AA. It's a place where I go lean on people and share my truth and try to be open, honest and willing to change. And AA I can't speak for it. Every person in AA is a new, unique and authentic person. Same as me, just making each day work. So our life experience we share to find the wisdom to keep on going and make the day work and be a part of family, community and society. That's how it works. And it's a bit more complicated as we go along because there are 12 steps of action for an individual. And 12, sorry, yeah, 12 steps of action about being open, honest and willing. And then there are 12 traditions which hold the fellowship together. Noises off this morning. So, I go to AA, 720 meetings in London. How's it going today? Well, it's the end, it's the final day. So I guess after this there'll be some follow-up on how, how I am doing with uh, type 1 diabetes, which is all to the good. So, uh, recovery. AA meetings, there is a preamble shared at the beginning of every meeting and it's a way of me slowing down into this one moment and the preamble shared is about what is AA and it says here 
Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And after my long day of uh, intensive training, I did get to a meeting of AA last night called the After Eights, which is just at the back of Buckingham Palace over in Eaton Square. And uh, it's all about what's it like to be sober after eight years and what are the issues in later sobriety. And funnily enough, the issues are the same whether you're on day one or day 8001. It's the same. Uh, how, do we, how do we not drink one day at a time? Knowing that if we take a drink, it will, it will set up a craving. So one drink will not, well, one drink will, I can't remember the saying, but it goes like this, yeah, doesn't matter. I've lost my thread and uh, that's a good thing it means I'm tired out by what I've been doing so the, yeah the fellowship meeting last night really the, the most important message for me was this no matter what happens in recovery it's not about material wealth and the promises of sobriety are that we can face life as it is rather than bury our head in the sand or in a bottle so the gift this week has been immense and uh, you know with all the things that have happened hopefully my one day, well, my life plan one day at a time might last a bit longer. I've been frightened of using insulin to uh, large, a large extent because it causes the blood sugar to go down. And if it goes too far down, it can cause real, real problems. So I've been running hot, as they say, slightly above where it needs to be as an average. And now I realize that I need not be afraid of the medication I have to take, even though over, overdoing the medication can quite literally kill me, it's like anything. So like driving a car, go too fast and you'll end up dead. So it's always the way, isn't it? We have to find the balance. And as somebody said to me, uh, balance is something I know as I swing by. So from one end of the spectrum to the other, there is balance in the middle and uh, like a pendulum, that's me swinging by. There is balance and sometimes I hang on to it and sometimes I miss it. But uh, I share the daily reflections here, which is AA literature and uh, 12 steps of action. June is all about st step six, which is to deal with our defects of character. And uh, mine is primarily too much fear, too much ego, and too much putting on a brave face. So I said at the, the uh, course I'm attending at the beginning, I wanted to be honest. And halfway through, I nearly wasn't. I was pr practically willing myself to be dishonest to show that I had the right blood sugar levels and of course you can't cheat with these things and I don't know why it happens but you know we want to look good and so we might bend the truth and there's no point there's absolutely no point just tell the truth do do the proper thing and it will work out pretty well okay so the reading says AA regeneration such is the paradox of AA regeneration strength arising out of complete defeat and weakness the loss of one's old life as a condition of finding a new one. And that was the theme yesterday. You know, life changes completely because we're not a slave to the addiction. A Thousand Beatings by John Barleycorn. That's the inner voice which says, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll stop doing it and I can do it on my willpower. Did not encourage me to admit defeat. I believed it was my moral obligation to conquer my enemy friend. That is the enemy of alcoholism and the friend that alcohol had been all those years. At my first meeting, AA meeting, I, I was blessed with a feeling that it was right to admit defeat to a disease which had nothing to do with my moral fibre. I didn't do that on my first one. I, was a, I, was, I wasn't a backsl backslider. I just didn't get it straight off. I knew instinctively that I was in the presence of a great love when I entered the doors of AA. I was befuddled and it took me a lot longer. With no effort on my part, I became aware that, that to love myself was good and right, as God had intended, or in good conscience, or as my family suggested. My feelings, my feelings set me free, where my thoughts had held me in bondage, and I am grateful. So, in all of that, 
the most important part is that last sentence my feelings set me free where my thoughts had held me in bondage and for years self will self obsession self everything run right trying to make life work and be whatever other people wanted me to be so it looked right and now I find on a daily basis that my feelings help me be open, honest and willing to change and deal with the fear try not to put on a brave face and not utilise ego and with any luck I can then have a bit more courage a bit more faith, a bit more confidence to meet the day so I lean on fellowship and the rest will follow it won't always be good it's joyful and sad as life can be and the serenity prayer God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is always in my life plan just for today Don in London, good morning and I'm just setting my clock so that I don't overrun the 10 minutes if I last that long interesting 24 hours for me and uh, part of my start yesterday was to go for a routine psychiatric assessment with uh, the Chelsea Westminster Hospital Diabetic Clinic and the reason why I have psychiatry as part of my all-inclusive package at the moment of medical things is because when I got type 1 diabetes in recovery from being an alcoholic I was two, two years along all my systems were working pretty well and out of nowhere I had some sort of nasty shock which is associated with a tooth extraction infection and virus and I stopped making insulin and uh, they, um, I suppose in a, in a funny way it's interesting because over the years what's developed is I am in recovery from being an alcoholic in recovery just means a day at a time and it's an illness which doesn't go away it's classified as a disease and in addition to that I, I found out that uh, I had clin clinical depression all my life and that's now being treated as well and so between type 1 diabetes, clinical depression and being in recovery I've got a triumvirate of things going on so it can be quite complicated to work out on a daily basis what is working and really what I do very much is stick close to the fellowship of AA that's Alcoholics Anonymous because it gives me the basis of understanding the routines I need to keep myself going and cause myself least harm because self-harm is all part of the package when you're a, de uh, a recovering addict of whatever sort be it alcohol, drugs, substance or behaviour so AA is important to me in the preamble goes Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supported through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And with three things going on, I, I have to be fairly disciplined or things can go awry very quickly. And very often, uh, for me, if something's not right, like my blood sugar levels, then the rest of me goes a bit wonky as well so my eyesight is affected my uh, diabetic neuropathy which is pains in my feet from nerve endings either red raw or dying off all these things have an impact and uh, so as part of the package I have a psychiatrist who uh, I consult with as and when I need or on a routine basis and over the last few weeks I'm getting to know yet another new psychiatrist because they work on rotation in the diabetic clinic so it's like starting the story from scratch over and over sometimes which is not a bad thing because then I can tell if anything new is occurring and you know we need to change the regime from time to time depending on what's going on and at the moment I'm going to start reducing my pain killing medications down a bit to see where the pain threshold is because I quite like to function as best I can um, and that means I'm in a relationship and it's important to me to be as healthy as possible and to be fully operational as possible so make of that what you will but yes it can be difficult so <coughs> in my own world I have, to be, I have to be I suppose pragmatic 
and make sure that I'm getting all the support I need to function as well as anybody can uh, when dealing with three quite difficult, difficult conditions. And I don't mind that. It's just as life is today. And I guess, really, for me, that's all about acceptance. And part of why I do these videos is really just to say, you know, no matter what is going on or how bad it gets, life is much better sober because at least I can be alert and present for whatever is happening in the present moment. And talking to my psychiatrist yesterday, he said Freud said something. He said um, Freud said uh, three things are important: to be able to love and to receive love, and that's two things. And the third thing is to be doing something useful. So I feel I am doing something useful by sharing my story as it unfolds. And there's another part to that as well, which is connected to AA and anonymity. And I've been reading up on that, and it will be the subject of another video maybe later this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I've been busy. And I have a delivery of a proper computer desk coming today. One from Argos, which is cheap. And not overly expensive, like you see in the pine shops around here. And, um, you know, financial insecurity. I'm not actually financially insecure. I just have barely enough. I get less than the... Um, the amount of money is considered right for a person to survive, and I have been for quite num a number of years, but if, it, if I'm surviving, I don't care. What's important is how I feel about life, and at the moment, life is worth living. The daily readings, AA's daily reflections, uh, June 19th, AA regeneration. Such is the paradox of AA regeneration, strength arising out of complete defeat and weakness, the loss of one's old life is a condition for finding a new one, and it is. Recovery is just like a new life. It goes on to say, A thousand beatings by John Barleycorn did not encourage me to admit defeat. That is the inner voice which says, Keep on drinking. I believed it was my moral obligation to con conquer my enemy friend, and that's drink. Self-will will not do it, in my opinion. At my first AA meeting, I was blessed with the feeling that it was all right to admit defeat to a disease which had nothing to do with my moral fibre. I knew instinctively that I was in the presence of a great love when I entered the doors of AA. With no effort on my part, I became aware that to love myself was good and right. As God had intended, my feelings set me free. Where my thoughts had held me in bondage, I am grateful. And that is the absolute literal truth. Our intellect will say we can do this because we, we ought to be able to. And actually our emotional base needs to get support and be continually renewed. And one of the things I was talking about with the psychiatrist yesterday was, uh, he said, how do you deal with life on a daily basis? And so I go to a meeting to hear experience, strength and hope and get on with the day as best I can, getting just a little wisdom. And he said, what are you going to do when you crash because it's inevitable with clinical depression, even taking medication, that uh, depression comes back in its own way. And I say, I'll double the meetings I go to, because simply isolation will keep me sicker. And uh, if I'm out and about and being part of life, then at least I have a fighting chance of living through the depression. I can't fix it. And that was another issue we agreed on. You can't fix an addict. An addict needs to find a way to recovery and stay in recovery and stay stopped. So it's not an easy balance. Coming to up to Bill, as Bill sees it, and uh, time is short, page 174, Constructive Forces. Mine was exactly the kind of deep-seated block we so often today, we see so often in new people who say they are atheistic or agnostic. They, their will to disbelieve is so powerful that apparently that they prefer a date with the undertaker to an open-minded and experimental quest for God. Happily for me, though most of my kind who have since come along to AA, the constructive forces brought to bear in our relationship, in our fellowship, have nearly always overcome this colossal obstinacy, or stubbornness, as I would call it in me. Beaten into complete defeat by alcohol, confronted by the living proof of release, and surrounded by those who can speak, for, speak to us from the heart, we have finally surrendered. And then, paradoxically, we have found ourselves in a new dimension, the real world of spirit and faith, enough willingness, open-mindedness, and there it is. And, you know, 
there's a lot to be said for that and the, the absolute truth I went to an AA meeting last night and the, the, the speaker last night or the chairperson said mine is a very simple understanding of God and it's my understanding and not yours and uh, you know we all come to an understanding with our emotional and spiritual well-being if we give ourselves the opportunity and it's not for me to push my idea one way or another I don't know what God is but I do sure know I'm not it and that's enough and uh, coming on to the 24 hour day book, June 19 we have this choice every day of our lives we can take the path that leads to insanity and death that's drinking and remember our next drunk could be the last one or we can take the path with, that leads to a reasonably happy and useful life the choice is ours each day of our lives it says here God grant me God grant that we take the right path have I made my choice today well this morning I have I choose not to drink and uh, if I go to a meeting it's highly unlikely I'll drink today just one day only just for today I'm uh, signing off for now more on anonymity maybe later <laughs> Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved, and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June, for me, is all about step six. So I share the step. And also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the, in the biblical sense, the seven deadly 
seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues the opposite and if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect envy is the desire for others traits status abilities or situation gluttony the third one is an inordinate desire to consume more than one than more than that which one requires lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury it is also known as wrath wrath or wrath sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work and the opposite if you like the seven contrary virtues humility kindness abstinence chastity patience liberality diligence and the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the the poem an epic poem written by Prudentius circa 410 AD an epic poem written practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth so very black and white you're either one or the other but in real life what are we we're all of those things at different times in our lives and although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned we all have some sort of traits around those issues and the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it in step six and step seven so step six is all about my defects of character and step seven is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so step six in the fellowship program reads as this with a bit of commentary from me and don't forget this is just a personal understanding it's your understanding in the end which counts and where do you get your personal understanding from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough so we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character this is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls so de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again don't get hung up on creator it's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this the common good often is used or utilized of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member 
To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release, my obsessions to drink vanished. He was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way, because I was a stubborn son of a gun, and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self-will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices Wis if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life. For nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose, and that's to do with our thinking and and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions. 
that in no case does he render as, com as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character. And if we think about our youth, where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood, and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms, and of course drink is not one of them, to excess and then addiction. But of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too, as many have found. So step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job. In other words, to find balance in our natural drives and living, so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We would be back on pride and self-will. The key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life. However it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow? Or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path 
if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it, even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you. Now if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call it only we call that retiring. Consider too our talent for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of the of such defects as these, and few of us would be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And We may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according, of course, to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question but practically speaking it isn't. Only step one where we made the 100% admission we were powerless over alcohol can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects as well as virtues will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues. 
humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? Are we ready? And the only answer is, yes, really. Or, if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry, the answer may be no, so we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects, we are still unwilling to give up. We ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because... You know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often, that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behaviour. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student. And it was pounced upon as a defect. 
It's a defect to keep on pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say how am I feeling, why and what can I do? And if I feel okay given my current situation, if my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated. I need to to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? And that's not to actually analyse to death. How am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point. I don't know how I feel right now. Why? Because I haven't given it a second thought. What can I do? Consider my options today. Or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful, or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do, then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and being less superficial and indifferent. And I think that sums it up. Cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent. And the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people. So the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone, inclusively, and not just me. So I'm merely a player, and I'm not the chief critic anymore, I hope. Although I will be chief critic in my own life, often, and sometimes flail at others and be critical, but it does me no good, and it does them no good. Step 6, June. Step 7, July. I can have a bit of both in each day. I can have a, a fairly bad start, or a fairly good start, enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going, or I could have fear, very facing an ego in my heart. It's as life is, and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others, so I can join in and be a part of again. Freedom to choose life, life on life's terms, always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live Anyway, serenity prayer, yes, I even sleep through all of that during the night, often, and then get told about it by my neighbours. So to God, or in good conscience, the serenity prayer is as follows. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.